search suspended for missing diver off Deerfield Beach. Authorities called off the search for a man who went missing while diving off Deerfield Beach. Coast Guard continues search for North Charleston diver missing off Port Royal. The Coast Guard continued Thursday its day-long search for a North Charleston diver who went missing near Port Royal Sound earlier this week. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Everything Scuba. I am definitely not Josh. And I am definitely not Lyle. But we are avid divers as well as scuba instructors here in the Midwest. We are. And uh, we're pretty passionate about diving. We want you to find your passion right here on Everything Scuba. Uh, if you're a diver and you want to be a better diver, if you are a uh, someone who's just curious about scuba diving, want to learn how to scuba dive, come visit us here. Uh, we'll help you out with that. Click the subscribe button, ring the notification bell. Do not miss out on upcoming episodes. So this episode, we've got some multiple parts again. We like to do a series of videos for you guys to keep you informed. So take it away, Josh. I might blow my whistle here. Though. Oh, no. Yeah. So today and in the future, we're going to be talking about some surface signaling devices. And we don't want to scare you with the intro there uh, with Divers Lost at Sea. But as responsible dive instructors and divers ourselves, we have to be prepared for anything that could happen or anything reasonable. And part of that preparedness, as we've learned in classes, is to have surface signaling devices. Yeah, we want to make sure that uh, we don't get lost at sea. Uh, we want to make sure that if we're getting separated from our group, uh, we can't get back to our boat because of current uh, we have a method that we can get people's attention, either using sound or we have some visual uh, uh, items that we can use to get your attention from the surface. And we've got some more technologically advanced ways uh, using GPS to actually broadcast our position at the surface. So we're going to go over to North Iowa Scuba. Uh, I'm going to give you a run through of kind of what we would recommend that you have uh, as a diver on every dive that you're on. And then in part two and part three, we'll expand upon each of those things. So stick with us. All right, guys, we got a uh, selection of safety uh, equipment here for signaling purposes. Uh, in, in the case of a worst uh, case scenario where we're uh, adrift and uh, we're separated from our group, um, and uh, potentially maybe caught in currents, uh, we can't make it back to our boat um, or back ashore, um, we eventually want someone to find us and uh, bring us uh, uh, back to safety. And so uh, we'd certainly uh, encourage and recommend strongly that people consider some of these items that they carry with them. So on the far left here, we have two signaling whistles that we can use to you know make noise at the surface uh, this this whistle uh, is actually part of a kit that comes from Dan or Divers Alert Network uh, we have a separate show uh, upcoming talking about uh, Dan and uh, what they do for divers and uh, certainly an outstanding organization um, whistle next to it here this is what I personally carry I have it uh, on just a, a simple bolt snap here uh, that I clip off to my BCD and that way it's always accessible to me. This is a storm whistle. Uh, they claim that uh, this is the, the loudest whistle uh, in the world uh, at about 130 decibels. When you blow into this thing at the surface, uh, anyone close by is uh, usually not very happy with you. Uh, and interestingly enough, you can blow this whistle under the water and I've tried it several times and yeah you can actually get people's attention under the water using this storm whistle and any of this equipment I'm we're gonna leave links down below uh, in terms of where to find it and, and cost uh, associated with it but this is my personal whistle that I carry with me uh, just in case right here uh, signaling mirror 
Uh, this is the new one. This also comes as part of this same uh, kit, uh, the surface signaling kit that you can buy from Dan. Um, I usually tie that off and uh, it's usually located with my whistle or this uh, SMB will show you in a little bit. It has a nice little pocket that you can store this in. And so though the whole purpose of this is um, you can look through this center point. Uh, say uh, there's a plane uh, out looking for you. Um, you can actually <clears throat> identify that object in the in the sky. And the whole goal is to maybe catch and glint sunlight uh, off of the mirror so that they can uh, see you on the surface. On the back, it gives you nice instructions on how to uh, utilize that. And so it's very light, very easy to carry. Uh, so that's part of my kit. In the middle here, we have three uh, SMBs or DSMBs. Uh, an SMB is a surface marker buoy. The D portion of the DSMB is a delayed surface marker buoy. Uh, the difference between those, uh, divers might get into arguments over that, but a delayed surface marker buoy usually is attached to a line and it's sent up from below the surface to alert uh, vessels or uh, the boat captain as to the location of those divers. Uh, any of these you can attach to a line. Most SMBs uh, can be done in, in that way. So uh, this one maybe most divers would be familiar with. And again, we'll, we'll unroll these in a, in a little bit. We'll go into a little bit more detail. This simply has a uh, valve which can be depressed. Uh, you're going to blow into that. It's going to expand and open this up. This is about a three, a 36 inch uh, SMB I believe and uh, so it's a way for you to be able to signal from the surface. Uh, you could send it up. You could tie off a line to this and send it up to the surface uh, if you were at your safety stop and wanted to alert uh, others to your presence below. Uh, this SMB or DSMB, uh, it's actually manufactured by Patty. Uh, this one actually is inflated only by your uh, alternate uh, air source. And so there's an opening right here. And again, we'll open these up in just a little bit. Uh, there's an opening right here that you can insert just the mouthpiece uh, in and just slowly inflate that up. You'd obviously tie off your line to, to this and that's going to shoot up to the surface. Uh, once it reaches the surface, the one downside to this uh, style is you run the risk that if this if this were to breach the surface, air could leak out and the, and the surface marker buoy may not stay upright. Uh, so we use this purely for instructional purposes. It's not something that I carry with me uh, routinely when I dive. This one from Dan we'll go into a lot more detail on. This is actually my favorite DSMB. As you can see, it's quite a bit larger. This is about a six foot uh, DSMB, uh, so very long. And it has some other features that I really like about this. And when we unroll it, uh, we'll show you what those features are. Uh, a little light. Uh, so uh, this is uh, part of the surface marker kit that you can buy uh, that comes with uh, all four of these objects come in the same kit. Uh, I believe it was around $85 to $90 for, for the entire kit and you can order that directly from Dan's website. Again, we'll, we'll give you uh, links down below. Uh, but this light, uh, kind of nice. I, I actually wish uh, and I may purchase separately a, a small strobe. I wish I had a strobe function. This is purely only has an on and an off function. But again, uh, if you are uh, adrift, uh, it's nighttime, uh, you can always uh, tie this off to the top of the SMB so that gives a little bit more of a, of a signal. Uh, obviously by doing this you can potentially message SOS uh, any passing vessels or aircraft if you had to. Uh, the strobe function to me would be would be nice and uh, we may actually do a program looking at different strobe light options. And this last piece of equipment is the Nautilus Lifeline. Uh, this is actually a marine rescue GPS unit. Um, uh, any ocean dives that uh, I do, I typically will tie this off to me. You can see there's a bolt snap here. I clip that off and uh, just loosely tie that to me. And uh, the goal of this unit is, again, if I'm uh, adrift at sea and uh, 
and no ships are close by and not within visual uh, range, um, I can actually pop this unit open, a small antenna will appear, and uh, I can activate it, and it broadcasts my GPS position within about a meter to a meter and a half of my actual location. And this broadcasts up to 34 miles, uh, uh, nautical miles around you, uh, and it uh, broadcasts out on uh, the uh, uh, emergency channels uh, of uh, passing vessels. Uh, and so um, this is about uh, anywhere online you'll see about 160 to 200 dollars depending on where you purchase it. Uh, again, we'll give you a link maybe to the Amazon site. Uh, you can buy a nice case with it. Uh, but we are going to do a, a little bit more detailed video looking at this uh, Nautilus unit and uh, for 160 dollars uh, you hope you never have to use it but my goodness that would be uh, money well spent if, uh, if it ever happened. Uh, every year there are certainly stories of divers who don't expect to uh, have issues uh, come uh, up from a dive and uh, cotton current and don't quite make it back to where they want to, this could help you out. So I just wanted to give you a quick outline of what's available um, and uh, our recommendations would be you always carry a, at least a, a whistle, so uh, some kind of sound maker at the surface should always have an SMB, DSMB attached to you. Uh, obviously, if you're diving in a small body of water like maybe we do here in the Midwest, maybe a little overkill, but if you're ocean or sea diving, uh, certainly good ideas to have. And so we'll take a little look at these SMBs in more detail.